We are back. It's your host, Stephen Lim, driving. But also, we have another host driving, Andrew Ilnicki. Adam, whose car are you in? I think I'd rather be in Stephen's car. What? Dang, get I'm, right. I'm a great driver. And why are we in two cars today, you might ask? It's because we're going on a picnic. That's right, today I'm worth it. We're going to be trying three picnics at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. That's why we're all driving separately is because we're all meeting at our picnic location. Picnics are having a little bit of resurgence right now. It's a great way to meet up with people, to dine outside in a responsible, socially distanced manner. And this will be taking place over three days. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're about to picnic for three straight days? Is this like, Picnic cello? Sure. Our three picnics are not all strictly picnic specific food, but they will be foods that travel well and are convenient to eat outdoors. All right, Andrew, what is the first restaurant that we're going to be enjoying today? First, we're going to see manager Jana at Jengalov Hots, an Armenian restaurant that specializes in one dish only. And the name of the dish is Jengalov Hots. Jengialov hat. The translation is bread with herbs. It's a national dish. We have few restaurants in capital of Armenia, Yerevan. Same name, same dish. Here in Glendale, we have a lot of Americans who love it as vegan food. The dough is very simple. It's a flour, water, salt. And the filling, we have usually 12 different types of herbs. Whatever we do in Armenia, it's exactly the same what we do here. We don't use any machine everything goes by hand and to open the door very thin it's not too easy that's how this restaurant was made to show customers the process of making the dish and they like it they appreciate it. because the dough is so thin it's not oven it just stove, flat stove it takes like 30 40 seconds one and another side and it's ready I have a lot of customers Friday Saturday Sunday people take like 10 20 breads by going outside because it's a nice and easy you don't get dirty, non greasy. People who grew up in Armenia, they grew up with this dish. I have a customers who come say, oh, it's so good you open here. It brings back memories. So it's a simple and it's a healthy dish. We're back. Picnic season. It's been a while since I've seen you in person. You I gotten think... stronger? I have, thanks for noticing. Yeah, you got a little buffer today. Not just today. <laughs> <laughs> we have a yogurt drink. I've had like the Asian yogurt drinks. Is it gonna taste like that, you think? I'm not sure. I've never seen this before. Cheers. <laughs> wow. I thought I was gonna get milk or yogurt and I got neither. It really has the same sort of like mouth drying and puckering as Greek yogurt. We're starting off with something very simple. Oh, but this is perfect picnic food. It comes in a box. You can pick it up with one hand. It's delicious. It's really good. It reminds me of the chai dumpling we had in Taiwan. It's so dense with green vegetable. You know what is surprising about this? It's kind of juicy in a meat kind of way. To be honest, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I kind of feel like I'm gonna be disappointed when I bite into that. Uh -huh. Just because I'm so preconditioned to like order things with meat. But this is very satisfying. We should have a picnic ability. Like, how much does it picnic? Reclined position, one-handed. Does it picnic? This picnics. This picnics. There's also dessert. It's just dessert with walnuts and honey. Oh my goodness, look at the inside. Oh mm. This is a fire hose of deliciousness into your mouth. I think this might be the most comfortable we've ever been. Ask me if I picnic. Steve, you picnic? Oh, I picnic. <laughs> Adam, do you picnic? We're now in our second day of picnicking. Now on day two, we're really getting into the elongated picnic mode. But before we get there, picnic fact. Woven baskets were the earliest vessel used to transport food because they were light and versatile, but also sturdy. If there's anything this fact says about humans is that we were born to picnic. Weaving in general is, I think is one of the most impressive inventions. The idea that you're taking a strand and turning 
turning it into something with structure and strength. I don't know if prehistoric Andrew would have been able to figure that one out. I am most certainly sure that prehistoric Andrew would not have figured out weaving. We're now on our way to see Jihi at Perilla LA, which is not a restaurant, but it's a to-go only business that sells Korean banchan. And this particular business comes recommended to us by our friend, sorry, a baby squirrel was just walking so slowly across the road. I always slow down for animals. So Perilla LA was actually recommended to us by friend of the show, Rie. Rie used to work with Jihee. Rie said, oh, you're looking for picnic foods? You gotta go to Perilla LA, it's I mean, during pandemic, I have a lot of time to think, and I always have this idea of making Korean banchan with Californian produce. Banchan is a little Korean side dishes that can be eaten with rice. So I grew up in Korea. My grandma started a restaurant, very similar model. They are known for their banchan. I used to work at Rusty Canyon. I learned a lot about how to treat great produce. Basically, it's a combination of what I I've learned at the restaurant with the flavor that I grew up with. I go to Santa Monica Farmers Market and I have a relationship with farmers. I always check with them and they just tell me what's good in the season. I do marinated okra. That's like one of the most popular menu. Okra is not traditionally Korean ingredient. I think it will be nice to add a char flavor. And I use the vinegary soy sauce overnight. And I also have an eggplant dish which is from my family that they actually use it even right now at their restaurant so the only difference i use serrano chili and my mom probably used korean chili <laughs> and nori chip it takes over a day i use two nori sheets together and then sweet rice porridge i spread it on top of it and then i dehydrate and then it become like dry chips a lot of my banchan it looks really simple but i have to wait like, I ferment a lot of stuff. It's amazing to see how flavor changes. The good thing about my food is you can pick up and then leave in your fridge. A lot of my guests, they told me like, oh yeah, I'm picking this up to camping. And I was like, oh, that's actually a good idea because it holds well. I'm also learning because it's not just about cooking. So I have to talk to customers. They have a lot of questions. I have to post on Instagram. I started cooking at my old apartment and there's no light. I bought the white box and I took the photo from my iPhone. It's all like learning process and I, I feel grateful to do that. Picnic day two. Day two. When it's a picnic day, it's a great day. Perilla, if you remember our first time eating it on this show, Korean barbecue. That's right. Perilla, a type of leaf. Shall we napkin? So Jihee's given us a bunch of different dishes. I think we should start with one of her favorites, the okra. Cheers. Cheers. That is not okra. It tastes like the word barbecue. The delicious char. When you bite it, it's like pulling apart and falling apart in your mouth, kind of like the way that barbecue does. Yeah, I'm honestly shocked by it. Jihi, what did you do to the okra? What you're tasting is thyme and not T-H-Y-M-E. Okay, chip break. Chip break. Oh! Oh my God! Oh, bam! <laughs> bam! Hey, chicharron, shut up. <laughs> This chip is in town now. It's a seaweed chicharron. Yeah, this picnic's real hard. So this is cabbage layered with perilla leaf. That is delightful. I mean, it's really pretty much exactly sauerkraut. You know what we do next? What? This egg looking thing that I think is egg. I mean, I never thought I would eat an omelet on a picnic. It's not just an omelet though, it's like a crepe. These green beans are catching my eye. Each of these you can just grab very easily with chopsticks, just go boom, done. All right, so I want to go to this one next. It's like cucumbers, like kimchi, like pickled. Is that pineapple? I think it's melon. Picnic. Picnic. Yo, 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 yo. Okay, shut it down. This is the best one. That's got everything going for it. It's pickled. It's a little spice behind yeah. it. Let's go to the eggplant. Cheers, Steven. Here. If you like eggplant, this is like the most eggplanty eggplant you can eat in your life. You want to take a real trip? Go back to the okra. I forgot how back sure back to where we started, and this is how you picnic. Around and around you go. Sounds like what you're saying is that this food picnics. This food picnics. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, picnic day three. And Steven and I are just along for the ride in the back because at our last picnic, we're gonna be enjoying some delicious wine. So before our last picnic, picnic fact. Most historians agree that the word picnic is derived from the 17th century word piquenic, though at the time it was used to describe a social gathering that was more like a potluck where everyone would contribute a different food item. By 1802, the term and the activity had made its way to London, where a group of Francophiles, people who love French culture, established a picnic society at which they were known to eat, drink, and put on small shows and performances. I love how it was upgraded to a dinner and a show outdoors. It also feels like it was more of an outdoorsman's kind of club. Have you ever been part of a food club? I have not. I guess this show is a little bit of a food club. All of our millions of viewers, we're all part of the Worth It Club. This is our own Worth It Society. Wait, now I feel like it's a cult. Speaking of picnic society, we're on our way to our last location now. We're going to see Chef Curtis Stone at his new pop-up at the Grove called Picnic Society. So at Picnic Society, Society, they have a number of curated baskets. The basket that we're gonna have features an assortment of charcuterie that comes from Chef Curtis's other restaurant, Gwen. I love how they're paying homage to the original Picnic Society. Kind of like fanny packs. Back in style, baby. I'm Curtis Stone and we're in Picnic Society, which is a pop-up by Gwen. Gwen's a butcher's shop and a dining room and the butcher's shop is sort of the heartbeat of the dining room. We pull together a beautiful selection of meats, game, wagyu, and we make all of our own charcuterie. What we were seeing at Gwen was a lot of people were coming in and buying things that would be sort of ideal for a picnic. We sort of just got a little playful with the idea and thought we'd do it as a business. And then we got the opportunity to come over here to the Grove and do a pop-up restaurant. So here we are. We have a beautiful big patio here at the Grove. And then we have a terrace up here on the first floor, which we call the backyard. It's really cozy, but still very individual. You know, when you think about a picnic, it's actually a beautiful way to dine because you really linger, you graze on the food. We've got beautiful blankets, lawn games, anything that you could imagine to create the perfect picnic is in this building. So there's a few ways you can go about ordering your picnic basket. You can either build your own or you can let us build it for you. So the Gwen basket really celebrates everything about Gwen. The big highlight is a beautiful selection of cured meats. Teresa's an incredible butcher and she runs the, the butcher shop over there at Gwen. She's also learned the charcuterie very, very closely. She studied it, she's moved to Italy. Wagyu brassola, brassola is air dried beef and we sourced it from Blackmore's Wagyu beef production in Australia. A couple of years ago, we actually went to Blackmore Farms in Australia and oh, had no a way. chance to interview uh, Mr. Blackmore David, himself. Yeah. yeah. And if it was a couple of years ago, there's a chance you saw the steer that you're gonna taste today. It's a beautiful product to start with and hopefully we make it even more special. And what goes so brilliantly with cured meats is wonderful cheeses. And then all of the things that you'd expect eat really well with that. Dried muscatel grapes, some crackers, some paste. We make a chicken liver parfait. I learned how to make it with Marco Pierre White when I cooked in Europe and it reminds me of my childhood growing up in tough restaurants. We make beautiful olive oil and sea salt stecker bread. Dom is one of our incredible pastry chefs here and he bakes that stecker bread as well as making all the beautiful sweet things that you can come and find. Chocolate chunk cookies. So we get big chunks of Elrona chocolate chocolate. I like to think the cookie's just there to hold the chocolate chunks together. Picnic Society, we would like to say you bring your own weather to the picnic. It's very true, you know, like a picnic is meant to be a time that you spend with people you care about and it's not meant to be rushed. I'm extremely comfortable. It's not just this deluxe blanket that we've gotten just for this occasion. What is this? This is made by Trilby Nelson, and you can buy these at Picnic Society because you can buy everything you need for a picnic. Look at this box. It looks like a briefcase. You ready to pop it open? I'm gonna pop it. Three, two, one. Okay, so we opted to also buy a bottle of wine and we have a nice Greek rosé. Rosés do that really incredible job of still being light, but they can hold up to that beautiful cured meat. And it matches my blanket, come on. Cheers, Cheers Steven. To three picnics. Yo, that's nice. Whoa! I just I just saw the chocolate chip cookie. That that's for dessert, Steven. Yeah, I know, but it's a you thing. Start with it. It's a picnic. A picnic. Yeah, rules. true. Don't try to throw your rules on me. I'm starting with a chocolate chip cookie. You want to start with a cookie? We'll start with cookie. Oh my gosh! You can't go wrong with chocolate chip cookies. It's almost like a chocolate panini. Now let's get to some savory food. I say we kick off the parte with a little parfait. Oh man, that's good bread. Look at this. I don't think I've ever spread chicken on bread before. 
My hearing just cut out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do the cheese next. So I love a cheese that's just kind of like butter. So this one was a Bloomy Rind Sheep Milk Cheese. I love cheese. We got some dried grapes here. So in Australia, you remember the Museum Muscadel? That's wine produced from this type of grape. These grapes are crazy. I think it's time for a posture change. I'm leaning over. Steven, are you seeing the sunset right now? Look at these clouds. Look at the mountains. It's time for some meat, I think. So, so good. It has this incredible, like, jamminess to it. It's borderline fruit leather. There's duck speck yeah, in so, here. Yeah, so that's the darkest one. This duck is the best bacon I've ever had. I want a pickle now, because I've had a lot of really fatty meats. Pickle cheers. So Steven, does this meal picnic? This picnics! And I can do that, because I'm outside. That was a picnic trilogy. I've really developed a new appreciation for the picnic. I think I'm gonna be picnicking a lot more in the future. It's time to tell me. Which picnic was the most worth it at its given price point? I think all three of these truly picnicked. I think my winner is gonna be Perilla LA because I had no concern about taking my time with that food. And I think for me, that's what's best about a picnic. You know, I really love the Picnic Society. Those meats were just perfect. But the question today is, does it picnic? And yes, while the Picnic Society does picnic, and while Perilla LA does picnic, they love hots. They really picnic. You can grab and go, you can bring it to a hike, you can bring it to the beach. Adam, who's your Worth It winner? Perilla LA. All right, that does it for Worth It Picnics. I'm picnicked out. See you next week when we do Worth It Savory Pies. Bye. Mm -hmm.